Kyrie Irving is one of the most talented players of all time. When he is on the court playing, he is playing with the best of them. However, his off-court antics have always followed him everywhere he goes, and it has had an impact on his reputation around the league. Let's hear what some of the NBA's legends have had to say about Irving, whether it is a word of advice, a compliment, or a straight-up rant. Bill Walton is one of the NBA's first legendary big men. The big red head is a big-time fan of Kyrie, but once Irving got traded to the Mavericks, he wasn't so sure whether Kyrie and Luka would work out together, as the two demand such high usage. Mark Cuban, he's got an ultimate challenge on his hand right now because he's got a brilliant player. He's got a fantastic team and franchise and fan base right now that is full of hope and opportunity and purpose, all the things that the NBA gives to us on an everyday basis. But now he's bringing in the great unknown. And unless Kyrie is willing to sacrifice and say, how can I live my life through you guys? Because if that happens, things can be magical. If they have enough talent, if they can control the paint, if they can get some chemistry going between two ball dominant players. Mm. And then you've got to have the other guys who were willing role players for Luca right now. Then they have to change and adjust and accept and all that stuff that goes into the team dynamic. But ultimately, it comes down to three very simple things. Sacrifice, discipline, and honor. Do you want to win? And are you willing to do anything that it takes to get that done? Isaiah Thomas is one of the greatest guards the league has ever seen. Known for his playmaking capabilities, Thomas' abilities to drive the defense crazy were unmatched, especially during a slower and way tougher era in the NBA. When asked about whose game reminded him of himself, Isaiah Thomas had two guys in mind. I, I'll put it to you this way. I like watching Kyrie Irving play. You, that, that's who I was, because he like, had one rock like you. Yeah, <laughs> I like watching Steph Curry play. Now, I don't know if I played as good as them, uh, but I like watching <laughs> two guys right. play. Um, I always thought that, and, and I looked at, I looked at our era and I looked at myself as, as very unique. Um, I looked at myself as a player, you know, as a Picasso, as a, as an original. Right. And and so I I'll, I'll I'll go back to those five players that we named earlier. Kareem, Magic, Bird, Dr. J, Michael Jordan. Okay. None of them played like each other. Everybody was kind of an original. Right. And when I came into the NBA, I looked at myself as an original. So when I look at the NBA right now, I do see some guys carving out their originality in their own space. Right. I think Steph Curry has done it. I think Kyrie has done it. Uh, other guards, uh, they're still they're still trying to get there. You know, and I'm not talking about now somebody say, oh, you don't like hard and all that. No, that ain't what I'm saying. I'm saying when you look at, you know, guys that have done things that I just haven't seen, like, some stuff that Kyrie do with the basketball, I, I haven't seen that. <laughs> <laughs> you like it? It does like he got it on the screen at times. It, it's a little different. It looked like he <laughs> looked like he looked like he dancing with it or something, right? Chris Webber is one of the greatest NBA players to never win a ring. Looking back at it, Webber thinks that he overstayed his welcome in certain situations in his career and gave a word of advice to Kyrie and Harden after naming him among his favorite NBA players. I like Jokic. I like Embiid when he going to work in the post. I love watching Simmons on the break when he has the ball. Hard and Kyrie with their handles, you know. I, I, you know, I, it's so funny beginning of the season. So, you know, I did a movie with Kyrie. But I, I don't know him. I, I don't know if I ever talked to him on the phone. You know what I mean? I got respect for these guys, but I don't know them like that. So the beginning of the season, I'm with him and Harden. I'm saying Harden should get out of Houston. Uh, it's, it's messed up. He has a black coach, but right. Steven Silas going to be all right. Yeah. And mm -hmm. did they hire the black coach just so I can give you the guilt of the black player? Right. Like, we on, you know what I'm we saying? Know I'm like, Harden, get out of there, dog. Because at yeah. the end, we're going to say you was a loser because you stayed with this team. I, right. I know a little about that. Right. So I'm like, Harden is the call. Oh, man, we don't know what he taught. Uh, basketball players shouldn't do this. Then Kyrie. You know, I'm like, he's incredible. I know he against the media and we on the media side now, whatever, but I, I get it, you know? And I think if the media looked at different personalities like wrestling, 
You know what I mean? Like the Iron Sheik, you know, he over there. Nikolai Volkov, he from Russia. Like Kyrie, he got a walking stick and he don't talk. Use that, you right, know what right. I mean? Like, exactly. don't don't make him like everybody else, you, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so I remember the beginning of the season saying, man, they're gonna be cold, they're gonna have, and I remember just seeing the hate from the media mm, toward, yes. and I was like, oh yeah, snap out of it. Remember, you know, remember that, you know, everybody got their ulterior motives with it. And it's funny, I said all that to say, nah, it's funny that everybody loved, you know, Kyrie should be MVP mm-hmm. or Harden, him going there, getting assists. Like, that don't surprise me. No one blamed than Tony for the way Harden played. Right, nobody Harden, did. Nobody. Nobody Dan did. Then Tony wanted him to play that way. He yep. would tell us, he would tell us, like, blame it on me. And um, so for, you know, players today, I love the young ones, and I also love the older ones that had to go find their way and still reinventing themselves. And to me, Harden and Kyrie, those are my two, you know, two of my favorites to, to watch Booker. A lot of boys, a lot of boys out there. Jackson followed up Weber's comments and shared his short take about Irving and his situation. I talk to Kyrie all the time. So, you know, we all been misunderstood. And that's just it. But when it comes to playing basketball, Oof. you can't, can't, you can't tell him that. Over the years, Kenyon Martin has released a couple of statements about Kyrie Irving, but always kept it 100 when it comes to giving answers to the questions he was asked. Since we are going to cover a bit more of the criticism towards Kyrie later in the video, let's focus on Martin praising words for Kyrie. Is Luca the best player on this team? Mm. Production-wise, I didn't ask you that. (laughs) 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 Enough said, but in MVP, he's the fourth best player in the NBA compared to the list from the other day. (laughs) He in the MVP conversation, and in my opinion, I don't think he's the best player on his basketball team. But that's for another, never mind, move on. Just sip my tea. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is... Can we got, um, so who's the best player on the Mavs if Luka's not? Hey, I, I mean, I know one, I, I know one, I put it like this, you know when people be talking about one-on-one? I know if you ask Dinwiddie who's the best one-on-one player there, I guarantee it won't be uh, who they think it is. Won't be Luka. You know what I'm saying? Guarantee you line him up, let him play ones. Oh, he couldn't be, uh, Dinwiddie say, oh, he got mopped every time. Yeah, every time, dog. And you line him up against Kyrie, it'll be a, listen, he might don't touch the ball. <laughs> if you give Kyrie the ball first, he might, Luca might won't touch the ball. 11-0? Hey. <laughs> Luca can't guard this goddamn um, camera stand. <laughs> hey, yeah, no, no, but that's what's up. But, when, but when they say, where, where y'all ringed in with he? Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, you know he what I'm saying? Him. <laughs> and that's I mean, all I'm saying. That's but the value. Yeah, that's that value. Is Luca good? Yeah. Absolutely. Good for his team. Is different. Yeah, see, I'm not, see, and that's the thing with real basketball people. Mm-hmm. Num like if your numbers don't equate to something, mm-hmm. they just numbers. And I look at you who you are and what you're doing and your it's, I look at Kyrie like yep. Yeah, give me a lap. Yep. <laughs> give me number lap. Scotty Pippen is going to be the first one to criticize Kyrie. While Kyrie was a part of the Boston Celtics in a game against the Bucks. He left the court with 10 seconds remaining on the game clock. While there was no chance of the Celtics making a comeback, this move was heavily criticized by the basketball world. Scottie Pippen was a part of those who were against this move by Kyrie, who was the Celtics' leader at the time. BS. Why? I've, I've experienced that before when you kick a team's butt and they turn and walk into the locker room. You know, stay out there with your teammates, take the beating. Let the buzzer finish and walk away like a man, and then you don't have to deal with those questions from the media as well. Although Jackson tried to defend Kyrie, saying that he had done the same thing when he taught the game was over, Scotty did not pull back whatsoever. You're not the star player on the team, so they're not going to magnify you walking off the court. Right, right. Kyrie Irving is. If there is an NBA player from the 70s that is a huge Kyrie Irving fan, that would be Julius Irving. Dr. J has admired Kyrie's game from his very first days in the NBA. He always believed in Kyrie's talents and saw his ultimate potential. Well, uh, when I watch him play, I, I, I see he's a guy who has no limitations. Uh, he's supremely confident. And, uh, you know, he is skilled beyond belief. Uh, you know, when he has those one-on-one situations and he gets low and he's handling the ball, I mean, there's no, there's nobody on the planet who can stay in front of him, so, so you know he's gonna, he's gonna uh, get open, uh, 
uh, whether you know he can consummate the play, you know, put the ball in the hole or not. Sometimes it goes, sometimes it doesn't. But fortunately for him and for Cleveland, most of the times it does. Over the years, the two have grown closer to each other, and Dr. J even shared a word of advice for Kyrie. You know, a little bit of time that I, I spent around him, which was in the last two years, mm -hmm. uh, seemed to be very, very modest. Um, you know, I think he's success driven, not ego driven, and that's very important because you got to, you know, you got to have an ego to play the game. But if you're just driven by your ego, your ego can be deflated. You know, one fell swoop, and uh, and he's endured through, you know, a lot of injuries and hard times. You know where he's, he's been limited with minutes and, and limited with games played, uh, considering the you know, short length of his career. But I think he's uh, eager and uh, prepared to try to make up for all that and wants to do that. So so he's got a little bit of a chip on his shoulder and, and does feel as though he has something to prove. Obviously, you know he's the heir apparent to LeBron uh, with the Cavaliers, and uh, I think the stage is set for you know him to just uh, finish out what he needs to do to, be, to go to the Hall of Fame. Gilbert Arenas was one of the coldest players in the 2000s, whose career was unfortunately cut short due to injuries and the infamous locker room incident. While Arenas has been out of the league for more than 10 years now, he has still remained around the game of basketball with his podcast, No Chill with Gilbert Arenas. In one of the episodes, Agent Zero explained why Kyrie is so good and reminded people of his basketball talents. Kyrie's last three games, right? As fans, you, you, should, you should really understand basketball now and look at it from a different standpoint. When, when players say these guys are good and then you say cap because you're looking at stats, look how much he sacrificed for Luka. Luka's gone, look who he really is, yep. right? And I don't think, yeah. like as players, this is what we know. Right, so when we say this person's this, this person's this, it's because we are there real time. So we know how dangerous somebody is, and we know when someone's delegating responsibility, yep, yep. right, to fit in. So when someone says, oh, this guy is the best, because we know who he is, but he can't be that if Luca's already there. This is his team, so he has to play Robin yeah. when he's really a Batman too. When Kyrie Irving made his anti-Semitic comments, he found himself attacked by a lot of harsh comments. One of those comments was made by NBA legendary big man, Shaquille O'Neal, who seems to have given up on Kyrie and his off-court dramas. I was probably one of the first guys on Twitter, and when I realized the power it had, I knew I had to be very responsible. Followers, platforms, whatever you call that, I knew I had to be responsible. I try to make people happy, I try to make people smile. My formula has always been the same. 60% to make you laugh, 30% to inspire you, and 10% whatever I am saying, I am saying. You have to be aware of what you are doing. And you have to be aware that sometimes when you put stuff out, not everybody is going to like it. Some people are conscious, some people are not. I can tell that he is not conscious. He does not really care what is going on. But I know that the game that we used to love and promote, it brings people together. And it hurts me sometimes when we sit out here and have to talk about stuff that divides us. We have got to answer for what this idiot has done. I stand for equality for all people, no matter the religion or where you come from. I don't really want to sit down and answer questions about what he has done. So, I can't speak for him, and what he thinks is obviously something that he needs to answer, but he doesn't really care. Tracy McGrady is still one of the best one-on-one -on -one players that the NBA has ever seen. His combination of size, strength, and skill made him a matchup nightmare for other players around the NBA. During his prime, T-Mac was even compared to NBA greats like Kobe Bryant, and there were legit discussions who was a better offensive player between the two. Now, an NBA analyst for ESPN, Tracy McGrady shared his opinion on who he thinks is the best one-on-one -on -one player in the NBA. So who do you think is the best guard in the league right now, 1v1? Kyrie. Kyrie. I think there are... There are a handful of guards that I, I think will, be, I mean, must see TV in 1v1. There's Steph, Kyrie, Dame is one of those guys. Um, I even put uh, somebody like a Bradley Bill in there. Um, Fox, De'Aaron Fox. But to me, it's, it's Kyrie.
During the drama surrounding Kyrie's misunderstanding with the Brooklyn Nets, Jalen Rose, who is now an NBA analyst, shared his take on the whole situation. Well, it's a lot of things. First off, just listening to the teams that you described. If, if I'm trading Kyrie Irving, I'm gonna need a, an, all, uh, an ascending all-star player in return. I don't need some picks two or three years from now to play with Kevin Durant, because I still have KD, I'm trying to win a championship. But as I dissect the entire situation, I actually ain't mad at Kyrie. And it's the definition of using what you got to get what you want. And I always talk about you don't get what you deserve in business, you get what you have the leverage to negotiate. And right now, his leverage is as high as it's gonna get to get a top-notch deal as a player. And he's gonna maximize that. And truly, if the Nets aren't gonna step up to pay him, and he got four teams that's willing to pay him and offer him a new situation to go do it, I ain't mad at him. Kyrie Irving is rarely compared to past NBA players. But if there is a guy whose name is mentioned the most, that would be Allen Iverson. AI was a shifty guard, just like Kyrie, whose game relied solely on his hooping skills rather than his size or athleticism. Just like Kyrie is today, Allen Iverson was a big-time player who brought his A-game when it mattered most, thus deservingly getting his infamous answer nickname. AI's handles were unmatched and players were trying all types of different ways to guard him, but rarely succeeded. However, even the greatest ball handler during his time thinks that there is a certain someone who has managed to outshine him in that regard. Is that something you agree with? Hell yeah. He got your best. Kyrie he has the best. He's the best. And Steph handle is crazy, but Steph and Kyrie jumper is wet too. But Steph, his jumper get him over a lot because he hit you with the He's hands so up. so afraid of the jumper. Do. Exactly. Yeah. And then he cross half court. He can let it go. So you think Kyrie has the best handles ever? Ever. Wow. Ever? Who you think? Kyrie will have you beat and then bring it back and play with it. Like he toyed with people, you know what I mean? Like he can, he can still just go, you know what I mean? But if, if he feel like playing with you. Kyrie is definitely not the young and up and coming star that he once was, but a 32 year old veteran on a promising Dallas Mavericks squad. The role as a Robin seems to be better fitted for him, even though he always seemed to want the Batman one instead. Kyrie seems to be a great fit next to Luka, and the combination of the two can make up for great success in Kyrie's last prime years. Hopefully, he gets his stuff together and we can enjoy watching him play at the highest level once again. He has given us great memories and has hit a lot of big shots so far already, but hopefully, there are plenty more of those coming in the future.